Welcome everybody to the Art of Wireless Security Testing. My name is Wayne Burke, the Chief Information Officer for SecureIA. It gives me great pleasure to deliver this presentation for you all. You're going to have a great time. You're not just going to watch me talk and talk and talk over slides. We're going to get down with our hands dirty and look at some of the latest groundbreaking techniques that the malicious folks out there are utilizing nowadays to either intercept some of your wireless traffic completely unbeknown to the end user or those victims. So I'm sure a lot of you go down to your local coffee shops and uh, you normally have free internet access. Well, this will give you a very good understanding of what potential risks you may be exposed to. Now, I just want to give you a quick rundown of some of the services we have on offer. This is one of the slides that I've been uh, mandated to give you all. Uh, if I don't actually cover some of this marketing material, I don't get paid for delivering this presentation. Just kidding, right? So we've got two sides to our business. The one side is the training division. And uh, with the training division, we offer training curriculum for penetration testing, wireless security testing, digital forensics, end user security tracks, and uh, the whole nine yards. The other side of our business is the professional services we have on offer. And once again, we do a lot of assessments, otherwise known as ethical hacking or penetration testing, digital forensics, and a whole array of other types of customized solutions. So feel free to go to the secureia.com website for more information or email us at info at secureia.com. So let's kick this off with a little bit of an overview of what we're going to cover. We are going to look at the typical wireless security uh, risks that we are now subjected to. We'll discuss a little bit about some of the standards out there, the IEEE, the Wi-Fi Alliance. We'll then look at war driving and what is war driving all about. Then we're going to dive straight into the hacking and cracking side of breaking uh, wireless encryption. We'll discuss some of the free software packages that are out there, which is a huge array. We'll discuss the basics of spectrum analysis, and then we'll actually finish off with uh, some of the new age protection or countermeasures for us to actually stop some of these attacks. Now, one of the very popular types of attacks that we have nowadays is wireless hotspot hacking. And there's an array of different types of technology used within these hotspots. But typically within the United States of America, there's a lot of competition between hotels, restaurants, coffee shops, you name it, that they all want to offer some extra level uh, or extra level form of service, normally through offering free internet access. Well, I'd just like to warn you all that if you pull out your laptop next time and you see a wireless access point and it's got the name free internet access, be very, very, very careful when connecting to that type of hotspot. That's because you may not actually realize this, but that's not a real hotspot. That's somebody that, that, that is actually connecting legitimately to the internet, yet they've set up their own access point that will entice you, the victim, or the end user perhaps, for them to connect through their access point. Needless to say, naturally for them, they want to connect, uh, want you to connect through their access point so that they can capture all of your usernames and passwords, such as when you go and do online banking. And we're going to go through an array of demonstrations showing you this for yourself so that you can get a better grasp for why you want to start taking some of these necessary precautions. There's a lot of home users that purchase wireless access points kind of follow the very overview, the very quick overview of uh, installing and setting up their wireless access point, but not a lot of people truly understand the advanced features of setting up the encryption. And as you may have seen from some of our other series of workshops and seminars, that there's obviously multiple ways that you can set up the various different forms of encryption. Now, it doesn't mean to say that the actual encryption algorithm or the encryption technology is weak. Typically, it's the way people actually implement it. So what we don't want to always do is implement it the most easy and efficient way because that doesn't always give us the greatest level of security. Once again, I'm going to show you how we can actually set up a basic home user or small business uh, wireless access point more securely so that you can sleep peacefully at night. 
Now, one of the biggest uh, uh, objectives that we always typically have within IT is to understand all these different new terms. And uh, we've got a huge array, a huge slew of these different standards and um, uh, acronyms that we actually use within wireless networking. Now, IEEE, it's a leading developer of the uh, standards that underpin many of today's technologies. Uh, their standards are developed in a unique environment where um, the building uh, consensus for open uh, processes based on input from an array of other interested parties. So uh, for more information, we'll be taking you to the website to demonstrate who the IEEE is and uh, what their real purpose is. Now back in 1999, we had another development of another alliance called the Wi-Fi Alliance. You'll typically find the Wi-Fi Alliance little emblem on a lot of products that you actually purchase that are, of course, wireless. So there's a, an, an amount of industry leaders that had come together that actually formed that global non-profit organization. Their goal was to drive the adoption of single worldwide accepted standards for high-speed wireless local area networking. Now there's an array of free utilities and tools that we can use out there and one of the demonstrations that I'm going to cover in a few moments would include the fundamentals of how RF or radio frequency actually functions. We all just think about wireless in terms of free internet access or wireless internet uh, access. We also need to take very serious note of the new emerging very popular RFID which is your radio frequency identity. You've got RFID nowadays built into a lot of driver's licenses, passports, you get the key fobs that you actually uh, put at a gas station or petrol station and uh, that will actually allow you to fill up your vehicle with petrol gas. So it's not just wireless technology as we typically understand it that we need to be concerned about, it's also the general radio frequencies that we need to be aware of. 